Today webinar, we'll talk about programming Xilinx Zing SOCs with MATLAB and Simulink. My name is Marta. I am the senior training consultant from Texas System Private Limited. My main role is to provide training. In this webinar, I'm happy to share with you this uh, webinar on the SOC. So the agenda for today's webinar as follows. First, okay, I'll talk about what is SOC FPGA. Second, I'll talk about conventional SOC design workflow and the challenges. The third topic is on model-based design for hardware software co-design, followed by the fourth topic on hardware software co-design workflow for SOC platforms that cover a few steps from MATLAB and Simulink algorithms and system design, followed by hardware description language or HDL IP core generations, embedded system tool integrations, software interface model generations, and lastly, SOC platforms and external mode processor in the loop verifications. I will end the sessions with okay, highlighting okay, to you featured trainings that cover all those steps. Let me start with okay, the first one. What is SOC FPGA? What is SOC FPGA, right? Okay. So SOC, okay, some of you may know, some of you may not know. It is a system on chip, which is an integrated circuit which integrates all or most components of a computer or other electronic systems. So it may contain digital, analog, mixed signal, and often radio frequency signal processing functions in a single chip. Typically, it is physically smaller and consume less power. What about SOC FPGA, such as Dialing Zing 7000 All Programmable SOC? It is belongs to okay, a family of SOC chips that combine the software programmability of a processor. Over here is ARM processor, which can okay, work on complex operations on the FPGA. And okay, hardware programmability of FPGA, which has a high-speed compute capabilities. So that's the SOC FPGA. What's the workflow for okay, SOC design? So conventional SOC design workflows covered from the algorithms design, followed by system architecture. If you recall on the previous slides, we talked about okay, software and hardware. So we have ARM processor and FPGA. When you work with ARM processors, we are talking about okay, software. So there is uh, steps on C code verifications. For FPGA, which is the hardware, there is HDR code verification steps. So C code verifications in, okay, involve peripheral drivers integrations, and HDR code verifications okay, involve peripheral hardware IPs integrations. Once you have done okay, the verifications, for both sides, okay, then you can do integrations and prototypings on the applications on the SOC. What's the challenges in the SOC designs using this conventional workflow? First, as you can see, we have processor as well as FPGA. So the first challenge is algorithms partitioning. What goes on the FPGA and what goes on the processor? The change in architecture involves okay, reprogramming of the algorithms. The second challenge on programming and verifications. So there's a need in proficiency in both HCA and C programming. Both languages have different verification methodologies, and it leads to late detections of an errors or errors. The third challenge, interfacing between software and hardware. So we need to ensure a okay, transfer of data between FPGA and processor. The fourth challenge is verifications of the design. 
So you need to verify the designs on the SOC. And the last one over here is on the applications and custom boards to configure different peripherals. So based on these challenges, okay, we'll look at a okay, different approach to the SOC design workflow, which is looking at model-based design approach for hardware software co-design. Some of you okay, may know, okay, or some of you may not know, about this term called model-based design with simulink. When say model-based design, okay, means that okay, simulink model is at the center of everything. So you start with the modeling, run the simulations. It depends on what you want to do with the simulations, okay, the algorithms. You can use automatic code generation features that we have okay, in simulink, MATLAB simulink, to do automatic code generations and get verified that on the hardware. So how does okay, this options works for SOC design workflow? When we talk about model-based design for hardware software co-design workflow, we start off with the same model, we do simulations. So based on the requirements and research that you have done, you build the simulator model, you can run the simulations, okay, and you know that we can create multiple subsystems. And as a user, okay, you can define okay, or do define partitioning. So you define or partition the subsystems of okay, model into hardware model and software model. What's going to the hardware, what's going to the software. Next is okay, the implementations. So we can use MathWorks Automate's code and interface model generations to generate the HDL code for the hardware model using HDL coder and to generate C code for the software model using embedded coder. And we can do link up between these two, which is the interface model generations. Next, okay, once we have the code for each, we can do a testing. So MathWorks okay, automates the build and download through FPGA tools. You'll be able to see how it works later on when I go through the demonstrations okay, for this. And you can see that everything is sitting in one environment, which is simulating. Meaning to say that okay, you can go back and forth from okay, one stage to another stage. If you think that you want to do okay, changes on the implementations, you can go to the implementations, okay? you can modify the code, or you can go back to the, the design. So you can do iterative process over here in on the simulating model itself. So this is the okay, uh, approach that we have using model-based design for hardware software co-design. Now, okay, to some of you, you may not okay, have an idea how it works. So I'm going to go through with you the example on how this hardware software co-design workflow for SOC platforms. It, we will go through, or I will go through a few steps, starting from your MATLAB simulating algorithms and system design. We'll do automatic code generations, the IB core, and we use the Synthesis tools to do the integrations to generate software interface model for okay, external mode verifications. Let me go through that steps with you. I repeat the steps okay, from what I explained earlier on in different ways, okay, in different diagrams, but we'll go through these steps okay, after these slides. We'll start with MATLAB and Simulink for algorithm and system design. We'll use the Vivaldo okay, to generate okay, HDL IP core for the hardware. So we'll go through the hardware first. And with the synthesis tools integrations, it will generate the software interface model where you can do verifications on Simulink environment onto the hardware platform itself through external mode verifications. So to some of you, you have no idea what's this external mode verifications. I'll go through with you later on. 
I choose a very simple okay, demo, very simple concept, okay, example, give you a better idea on the workflow. These examples can be found in the MATLAB documentations. So if you go through the website, www.methods.com help, HDL Cooler, you'll find this example. Okay, so it's LED blinking. So the idea is to give you an idea on okay, what is the design partitioning. So in Simulink, okay, we can actually create the subsystem of any algorithms. As you can see, okay, we use FPGA for okay, high-speed calculations. So usually, the interfaces that okay, link up with outside world or external okay, uh, I.O. is going through the processor. So when you actually build the model, first of all, okay, we need to take a look at okay, what's the algorithms that you want to okay, put in the hardware which is FPGA, which require a lot of okay, parallelism, okay? So you want to parallel process. Well, for this example, it's counter. If you look at the subsystems over here, okay? Basically, it take in the blink frequency information, okay? As well as the directions of the blinking. And the output, it will go to external port, which is the LED on the board later on. You can see when we do external mode verifications. So this is what we are going to okay, implement on the hardware. So the first step, okay, after we have the model, okay, is going to the design partitioning. Still using the same simulating model, basically. So first, you have to decide on okay, which part going to the FPGA. So you need to put it in the subsystem. Of course, okay, the rest, okay, as an interfaces, right, okay, we connect it to or we put it on the software, which is the ARM processor here. Okay. So we do the design partitioning in the simulating environment. Now, based on the steps that I have shown you before, the first one is to generate HDL IP. So we focus on okay, the FPGA which is the hardware over here. So you can see on the right-hand side over here, right? Hardware in the middle, okay? And then software is, okay, surrounding the, okay, the hardware. So the first step is to generate HDL IP core, okay, for this hardware. And when you generate the HDL, okay, the hardware, okay, HDL IP core, what it does is, okay, it's also, okay, creating an interface between the ARM processor with the FPGA, as well as the FPGA with external ports. How do we do that? So we can use okay, the, the apps that we have in the HDL coder, which is what we call it, HDL Workflow Advisors. Still, okay, at this stage, first of all, you have to highlight the FPGA part. So this is the subsystems that you want to implement on the FPGA. And after that, okay, you click HDL Workflow Advisors. It will open up HDL Workflow Advisors interface. So for those who have used this before, you know that, okay, of course, if you have not done that before, you can take a look at it later on. So over here, under Target Workflow, Okay, we have a lot of options. I'll show it to you later. So over here, one of them is IP core generations. And okay, you can select the target platforms and the okay, synthesis tools over here. So basically, to generate HDL IP core, you need to go through task number one all the way to task number three. So let me show you the page. So under target Okay, workflow basically there are a lot of things that you can do for SOC. You need to select IP core generations, okay, and then okay, you need to just click okay and run the task. Okay, you can use default okay, uh, reference design, and this is what I mentioned to you just now. When you generate HDL IP core, okay, you actually establish the connections between your processor and your FPGA 
and your FPGA with the outside KIO as well. So at the end of the task number three, okay, you will be able to get the IP over here. And okay, there is this uh, IP core that's generated. If you want to see, so you just scroll down the report, you'll be able to see the summary on the interfaces, the address, right? And then the theory of the operations. So PS okay, referring to the ARM processor and PL is referring to the FPGA. So the connections between the processor and the FPGA through Axilite okay, uh, connections, and you can also assign the external ports over there. So a lot of things for you to read. So I'll leave it to you later on when you try it out on your own. And what happens is over here, it will generate okay, the IP. So you see there is a HDL code generated in whatever folders that you selected just now. So now we already have the HDL code, which is the IP, but we don't have the project yet. So the next step is okay, to generate the project. So over here, okay, we use, or I use Vivado, I create the project. What it does over here is to establish okay, the connection with your IP and okay, it will help us okay, to create what we call it software interface model, where you can use it later on to verify the design on the simulating environment. On step number 4.1, okay, what it does is it will create the Vivado project. So once it created the Vivado project, what you can do, you can go to the Vivado software and open up the project. So basically it will create the wrapper. So we have system top wrapper.vhd, we have system top vhd, and you can see the diagrams that created. Okay. So okay, you see there's a zinc, which is the okay, uh, processor here. And this is the algorithms that we have, which is the FPGA. So I will okay, uh, zoom in and show it to you what's inside. So under the wrapper, it will generate the VHDL code that cover the input and output, the address and everything, inclusive the I.O. connections as well. This is the system top. Okay, so you can see all the XE over there. Okay. And the diagram. So do you see over here, okay, this is the LED count, which is the, okay, the subsystem itself, right? And there's a connections between the processor as well as the FPGA. So it's auto code generate for us. So if you think that, okay, you are the hardware designer, you want to use this and may want to add other blocks or other IP in the design, you can do so. Meaning to say that okay, you can do verifications at this stage, basically. Okay, so you can just uh, go to the Vivado. Okay, if you're a hardware designer, just okay, continue your work. But if you are not familiar with Vivado and you want to verify this algorithms works okay, in the hardware, okay, we have another options for the software engineers. So basically what you can do, you can go to step number 4.2. So at step, okay, step number 4.2, what it does, it will generate the software interface model. Software interface model is another simulating model that's similar to what you have, okay, what we have okay, before, but with uh, all the connectivity, which is the software I.O. driver blocks, the axi light connectivity, as well as the hardware. So this is how it looks like. So this is the new simulating model is actually created. As you can see, you may see this quite similar to what we have before. Right. 
this is the subsystem of the FPGA over here. Okay. And okay, if you look at inside this subsystem, basically this is what we have. So you if you recall earlier on we have a counter and everything. Over here practically is empty. What we have in this subsystem is only input and output port, which is XC4 light write and XC4 light read. The question is, where's the counter? So software interface models is okay, for us to use it in simulating to be able to get the input from simulating and pass the data into the hardware, which is the FPGA, and then get the output back into simulating. That's what we call it external mode. So before we can use this software interface model, what we need to do is you have to make sure that you have generated the bit file and download the bit file onto the FPGA. So before you can use this software interface models, what you need to do, right, okay, you need to build the FPGA bit stream. It takes okay, sometimes to okay, run this. So I just okay, show you the video of this one. This is what happens. It runs okay, the Vivado synthesis, okay, implementations, and all the way to generate the bit files. Okay, all the way. So you'll get the bit file ready. But the bit files is not on the hardware yet. Okay. So how do I actually download it? So basically, you go to step number 4.4 and click run this task. Okay, when you go through these steps, you have to make sure that okay, you connect the hardware to your host PC. So if you look at over here, there's an option called programming methods. So you can choose to download it. So you have to connect it and then okay, before you click this button. Otherwise, you'll get an error message. Now, how do we actually verify okay, the algorithms working on the hardware using or with on the simulating platforms. So over here we have what we call it external mode okay, uh, verification. PIL processor in the loop, meaning to say that okay, we pass it on the processor. Okay, let's show you what the external modes mean. So when you say external modes, okay, the hardware is connected to the computer, the host where there is a malware and simulating. And okay, we do or have the connections, which is the internet connections to the hardware. Okay. We have software interface model, isn't it? So basically what happens is, okay, on the host computer, you open up the software interface model after you download the FPGA, you click run button, what it does, it will get the stimulus from simulating as an input, passing through the Ethernet, going to okay, the exit connectivity from the software, which is ARM processor, okay, to the FPGA to process. If the FPGA is connected to the LED, you will be able to see the output on the LED over there, right? Okay, and then it will take back okay, the response from your hardware back to the host computer. So if you have scope or any okay, uh, logging, you'll be able to see that. That's what we call it external mode. So in terms of speed, okay, don't expect the, this process to be fast. It depends on the connectivity, which is in this case is Ethernet. But okay, what you can be sure is that the algorithm is working on the hardware. So let me show you how okay, uh, it works over here. So on the left hand side is the software interface model that I have. Okay, on the right hand side is actually okay, uh, the video that I take when it is running basically on the board. So you see the LED blinking. So over there, there is a slider gain where I can actually change the blinking frequency, faster or slower, as well as the blinking directions. When I actually click OK, because I run the simulations for infinite times over there, okay, when I click OK, it will actually get, uh, you will be able to see the changes on the board itself. But I don't record it forever, okay? So to end the session, you just click 
stop or you can actually set okay, how long you want to run it. So this is what we call it external mode verifications. So once you verify this is working, then okay, you can use okay, or you can go back to your Vivado and okay, confirm that this IP is working on the hardware. So basically, what okay, we have seen okay, is the workflow. Okay. And if you recall, before I show you the model-based design approach for SOC design, I show you the challenges, isn't it? From algorithm partitioning, programming and verifications, okay, how to ensure interfacing between software and hardware, and how to do verifications as well as if let's say I have a custom board, what can I do? So to address the challenges okay, in the SOC designs, right? Okay, I have shown you another approach, which is the model-based design approach. So talking about algorithm partitioning. So you see, okay, the first thing that we did just now, what I did just now is showing this use the, the simulating model. So you can okay, build your simulating model, okay, and okay, you can partition, okay, which part going to the hardware which part going to the software, everything on the simulating model. And okay, after that, okay, what about programming and verifications? So I mentioned to you that okay, we have automatic code generation tools. We have embedded coder for okay, automatic C code generations and HCL coder to automatically generate the HCL code. And both of them can work together. To do the verifications and it will generate okay, the software interface model it will automatically generate the okay, exit protocol drivers for us so you can okay, make use of the hdl workflow advisors to go through these steps okay for us the verifications if you recall just now we have external mode verification options where you can do the verifications on the same environment, which is on the simulating model environment. So it is a unified verification platform. If you have any custom bots, if you recall just now on the okay, uh, HCL Coder Workflow Advisors, there's options for us to select reference design. So you can create your own reference design and include that in the okay, HDL Coder Workflow Advisors. So you can use that. So anytime you can just change it easily. So everything is done on one platform. So basically, what I have gone through with you is okay, the steps, okay, automatic steps to address the challenges okay, of using conventional methods. And we use model-based design approach okay, for SOC design workflow. So that's basically okay, steps that you can get okay, or you need to go through and you can go through. If you want to know more okay, about this workflow, you can go to the documentation. Okay, there's uh, more details over there. And if you want to go through formal trainings that covered all these topics, basically okay, we have a trainings that cover exactly what I mentioned to you just now which is programming Zelling Zing SOC with MATLAB and Simulink. It is a two days okay, course okay, that's covered a few steps, uh, all the steps that I mentioned to you. Plus, okay, there is uh, additional topics such as how to do the setup, the environment setup before you can use or do uh, okay, work on this workflow. Also, okay, I highlight how to work the real-time applications. So meaning to say that just now with external modes, you can get the stimulus from the simulating. But what if I have the real stimulus? Okay. So the first day of the training covered how to do setup. Okay, talking about the embedded coder and HDL coder, going through the IP core generations and deployment, like what I mentioned to you just now. Also going through the processor in the loop verification 
and highlight on some get things like uh, XE4 lights interface. Okay. On the second day, I mentioned to you just now, okay, there's topic on data interface with real-time applications. So you can actually stream the data from okay, uh, external sources. And if you have any uh, I.O., you can okay, create a device driver that can be integrated with your processor and how to create a custom reference design if you have any okay, a new bots, okay, for example. Okay. So that's a uh, trainings that you can okay, take a look at it for this uh, webinar. But of course, if you just want to focus on okay, FPGA itself, we do have other trainings that's only covered on the FPGA site. Nothing to do with the okay, processor. So this training is just focuses on okay, how to generate HDL code from your simulating model. Okay, So it's also two days, but focus on the FPGA. So prepare your simulating model for HDL code generation. Okay? Generate the test bench. Verify it. Okay? Working with the fixed point. And okay, after that, okay, you can do a verification. And you are working with multi rate systems, those who are working with COM, for example, working with multi rate system, how do we actually generate the HDL code for multi rate design? On the second day, we'll talk about how to optimize the generator code, okay, working with native okay, floating point. Sometimes you see okay, you have HDL code from external. So someone give you HDL code. Okay, you can actually integrate that, okay, or interface the external HDL code, right, into your simulating. So that topics are also covered over here. And the last topic over here is on the HDL okay, verifications using code simulations. So the verification that I mentioned to you just now for the SOC is using external mode, okay, but for FPGA itself, okay, we have uh, FPGA in the loop verifications as well as code simulations using HDL simulator such as model sim or Questa sim and other external simulator. So before you do the productions, basically. So I think I have highlighted the two important trainings that you may want to take a look at it. So basically, today webinar, I mentioned to you it's a short webinar, but I hope okay, you learn something, you understand what is the SOC FPGA and what's the conventional workflow and the challenges and how this model-based design approach help us to address those challenges. I show you okay, the steps of okay, automatically going through from your design okay, into the verifications on the hardware. And some trainings that you want to take up or may want to take up okay, after these sessions. So before we go into the Q&A sessions okay, later on, I just want to highlight to you, okay, uh, probably just take a few seconds of your time to give us some feedback on our webinar. Hopefully it's useful and maybe you can okay, give us an idea what kind of topics that okay, may be relevant to your okay, work or to your case study. So we can take a look at it in future. Okay, we can share with you. If you want to learn more, okay, basically we have a few options over here. South Pace, okay, the free version, which is only two hour sessions. Not in that, okay, but give you uh, an idea what's those topic. But if you want to go deep, okay, you want to learn faster, okay, then you can actually attend our okay, class which is maybe two, three days training, right? You can customize as well. So basically, apart from training, we have consulting service where we have technical expertise that's actually deep in product knowledge, who has access to a lot of resources and broad industry perspective. And they can work on site with you, right? And okay, we have some of this, okay, options so you just feel free to let us know if you okay when you go back you have any technical problems on the software you can drop 
us an email at the technical support, okay, support at texasasia.com. As for event, you can get okay, regularly, okay, follow or okay, follow our Facebook, LinkedIn, or okay, look at our website for new event. Okay, you can see that a lot of events. There's also some okay, there's emails for you to okay, uh, use. So I think that's all from me. So now I'll open with Q and A sessions. You can unmute your line, okay, or you can type on the chat. Hopefully, I can hear some questions, whether it's the questions or okay, to verify your understanding. So give me some uh, response, basically. Okay, so now is the open sessions for Q&A. If there's no questions, okay, it could be... Okay, so I have one question here. Can I know where I can get the software freely access? Okay, so uh, can I check with you the software that you are referring to? Is it the MATLAB simulating software? So basically, uh, if you are from Edu, are you from Edu or commercial? Okay. Uh, I get question from Miss Noor. Yeah. For MATLAB simulating software, right? Okay. So for Edu, you can okay later on you can check with uh, okay our marketing teams can help you to check. For education, okay, if your university has a campus-wide license, you'll be able to access okay, uh, from your university account. Okay, but I'm not sure whether you have that. So if you don't mind, later on, okay, uh, our marketing team will help you to check with okay, the relevant department. Okay, and but of course, if you want to work with FPGA, right? I mentioned to you about the Vivado software just now, correct? So one option is you can install Webpack versions. So you can go to www.xiling.com and you can download the software and install from there. So you can try that out. So when we talk about okay, uh, FPGA okay, uh, implementations, you need not only MATLAB simulating HDL coder okay, or HDL verifier tools from the MathWorks, but you also need the synthesis tools from Xilinx if you are using Xilinx FPGA like what I showed you just now. So they are separate okay, uh, entity over there. Is that answering your questions? What about the rest? Okay, you're welcome. Okay, Eliza. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's very clear or okay, it's confusing. You know, when I run a training, okay, there's no questions, okay, there are two possibilities here. So maybe, okay, yeah, not sure which part. So there's one question, okay, is there any way to program the FPGA virtually through any software without availability of hardware FPGA. So, okay, if you don't have physical hardware, right, okay, you may look at options, okay, using the cloud, basically, okay. However, okay, for that one, you may need to pay for the service. 
So okay, you can okay, what you can do, right? Okay. Uh we can do a software verification. Software verification is going through what we call it co simulator for FPGA. So just now I mentioned okay, there's one training on the FPGA design uh, generate HDL code from simulate. So what you can do is get okay, you have HDL simulator like Quester Sim or Model Sim, okay, and then you can verify okay, that on the software. But I can guarantee that it works exactly the same with the hardware. So without physical hardware. But when we say okay, uh, external mode, FPGA in the loop, we need the hardware to be connected to the computer if you are not using cloud version. So Sandeep, is that answering your question? Okay, that's great. Okay, okay Ms. Noor asked another question. Some of the explanation is difficult to understand. Okay, okay, good. So what happens is, okay, yes, you are right. This topic is very engineering background and more the hardware so for your case right okay first of all uh, you may need to learn okay, a few things first on the matlab programming so we do step by step for you okay so for those who doesn't know how to use matlab okay first get okay, going to the matlab fundamental training first right okay and then after that, okay, you go through the simulating, so step by step. But for your case, right, okay, for biology, okay, it depends on what you want to do. So if you have any more questions, okay, I hope this is answering questions. I know, okay, it is a bit difficult for you to understand. Yeah, so this is a hardware, basically, right? But using this platform, it is easier for you to do the integration. Okay, so uh, for the video, right? Okay, where can I see this video lesson again? Uh, we'll see. Are we sending this uh, video to them? Yes. Okay. You will receive the on demand recording from me maybe um, tomorrow. Okay. So, okay, that's to answer uh, Nguyen's question. Okay, Eliza asked the questions. Is uh, Vivado integration software easy to learn for interface model? So basically, are you talking about Vivado side or from model based design okay, approach? Because now we have two sites software side and the hardware side. So model based design, right? Okay, I can say it's easy because you don't really need to okay, go through or go deep into the Vivado integration. What happens is that first you need to do the setup, which is not covered over here at the beginning because it takes, takes some time to do that. But you can go through the documentations on what to do first. So you install your Vivado okay, software on the back, okay, first, okay, and then you have MATLAB simulating and HDL coder, everything ready. You go to simulating, build your algorithms, correct? Set up the Vivado design tool. So there's a step to set up that to link up between your MATLAB simulating HDL coder with your Vivado. We don't really need to know HDL code, okay, uh, how to write the code, basically. So the HDL workflow advisors will help you get to generate the software interface model. Yeah, okay, if you say easy, well, okay, you don't really need to go deep because for software engineers, you need to make sure that the algorithms is working well on the hardware. That's why we use the external mode verifications, right? But the integrations, the final products, we have to bring it into the Vivado. So that's where okay, the hardware engineers comes okay, to do their part, basically. Okay, so hopefully that's answering your questions. Okay. 
for webinar i'm not sure i have not heard about this so the question is can we receive certificate from this webinar mm, i don't think we have certificate for attending the webinar right okay yes yes we don't have certificate mm. for the attendees to att attend our webinar session so alternatively you may choose to attend our paid training courses yeah that's uh, an option for you you're welcome is there no, any other questions I'm not sure how many of you are actually working with FPGA. Yeah, I believe okay, some of you are actually uh, working with FPGA and writing the code. Okay. So hopefully, looking at this workflow, right? Okay, so you can actually decide on okay, which part okay, you can use this workflow to speed up your design and deployment, basically. So it can coexist together. Okay, uh, yeah, Sandeep, later, okay, I will get my training, okay, Sandeep, later, I'll get my training coordinators to let you know how much on the courses, right? There are two courses over there. You let me know, okay, uh, which courses that you are referring to, okay? You're welcome, Audrey. Okay, the step by step. Okay, so there's one question. Can could you send the document step by step to do this via email? Okay, the step by steps, right? Okay, you can actually go through the doc MathWorks documentation. I will share you the link later on. Okay, Nguyen. Uh, of course, if anyone else, okay, uh, if you look at the link that I show you, I think on the The demos right when you click that link you will see the step by step basically is that clear Ian? if you have any issue okay uh well i'm not sure whether you want to try it now but okay uh let me show you the link just now this link are you able to see that yeah so if you click this link yes so it will bring you to a website web page okay. are you able to see the web page and this one you don't need MATLAB software right okay it is online and it will go through with you the steps just summarize everything over there to make it easier for you to okay, understand. Okay. Okay, I have a few more minutes, okay, before 4 p.m. Okay, I have questions, okay. How to choose whether to design using the FPGA or FPGA SOC? That's a very good question. Okay. So basically, first of all, okay, uh, are you asking okay, whether you should, because there are a lot of hardware here. For example, okay, uh, Zing, for example, ZBot, okay, like the one that I showed you just now, is what we call it Zing SOC hardware. When we say SOC, meaning to say that in one chip, we have FPGA and ARM processor. Whereas, okay, we also have other hardware, which is a Kintex board, okay? So it depends on your applications. You may actually just work with FPGA, or you may want to have some control. So the ARM processors over here works as a control, basically. 
Is that answering your questions? Okay, if you want to have a control on the timing, for example, so you want to have okay, some capabilities of ARM processors in the design, then you need SOC. But if you just focus on the computations, then you can work with the FPGA. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, uh, Tong Tom asked the questions. Now I use your USRP B210. Can I put software simulating in FPGA? Okay, so uh, I need to check USRP. Okay, is it okay? Uh, USRP, yes, I think there's a software and hardware inside. So let me check whether this hardware is supported. Meaning to say, if you recall, step number one, right? Okay, I have to choose Z port. So okay, I need to check whether USRP is actually supported over here. Okay, or is there any support package that you okay you have to install first? Because okay, the list that we I show you before earlier on is because I have installed the support package. Okay. So can I can get back to you later on? Okay. Okay, Audrey asked a question. Okay. Okay, that's a good question. So okay. Uh, there's a question on the trainings. Is it suitable for a person with no experience in FPGA programming but had some experience is using MATLAB and Simulink? Okay. Well, the answer is, okay, yes, okay, you, it is actually meant for, okay, uh, that group of people. But of course, okay, if you have the knowledge, it will be a plus or benefit. But we don't talk about how to generate the code, basically, because our focus is on the algorithms and verify the algorithms. The whole project required a team of software and hardware engineers to complete it. So Audrey, is that answering your questions? Okay, so okay. so there's one question. Can I get any reference material for getting started with programming FPGA using MATLAB Simulink? Okay, if you look through the documentation that I mentioned to you just now, okay, if you look at my screens, right? Okay, oh, okay. Let me, so basically, If you look at this documentation, okay, well, okay, you just have to create the account here. Basically, you can go through here and it will actually help you, okay, to go through how to work with this one. It is quite useful to me. Because you are not, okay, uh, writing the code, okay, this, we are not talking about how to write the HDL code, okay, but how to program it in the FPGA from the model-based design perspective. Yeah, training here. Okay. Uh, okay, I can copy this link, right? Okay, but do take note that okay, you may need to log in with your MathWorks account later on, right? Yeah. Uh, this one is okay. Sorry, just now is uh, yeah. ah, this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, two more minutes before I end the sessions. Sorry, two more minutes before I end the sessions. So, Sandeep, later you give me your email, okay, privately to me, okay, so I will follow up later on. Okay, anyone needs more on the training, you can uh, send a private, okay, 
chat get to me your email address yeah Thank you. Yes, I got your email. Okay, if there is no okay, if there is no questions, I hope that you enjoy the sessions and learn something about this and Feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Our marketing teams will follow up with you again. And for trainings, okay, my training uh, coordinator will okay, contact you again just to follow up. Right. So that's all from me for now. Thank you for your participation with all the questions just now. So stay safe and have a great day. So this is the email if you have any more questions later on after this session.